Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in, in the boomerverse. Yeah. <laughs> it's Ebro in the morning, and Big Boy is Yay! in the building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, buddy? Yo, how you been, man? Uh, super fantastic, phenomenally well, perfectly whole and complete. <laughs> all right, very good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Um, you got us all open off of Kill Joe, yeah. first of all. That's so it, man. tight. When we first heard that record, we are like, wait a second, hold yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, yeah. Do you have... Um, I, listen, I don't want to put words in your mouth because you may think... Sometimes when people say this statement, it makes you think that like I'm sleeping on you. Do you feel like people sort of slept on the last solo album a little bit? Like, the people who knew, knew what was up, but that shit yeah. was fucking great. No, not really, man. Like, because, you know, when I go out, I'm playing, you know, crowds, 80,000, 100,000 people doing festivals all over the world, so. So it never feels like, yeah, I guess when you have a, an audience that big at all times. Yeah, 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 no, nah, it might not be, you know, commercially in your face. Well, right, because I, I have to survive in that commercial world every day. Yeah. yeah. So I just want them sometimes to... To know, I know you're doing. Yeah. I know the festivals are popping. Yeah, overseas, nothing's changed. No, the no, checks no. are still varied. There's lots of commas. Yeah, so yeah. So things are still great. <laughs> yeah, man, like, life is beautiful, man. Is this how you would? Is this how you sort of um, foresaw the the post outcast life of um, Big Boy? I, I never knew, you know, what it was gonna be. I just know, you know, I love making music, and I just wanted to reach as many people people as possible. So um, I stay recording constantly. And I, mean, I stay on the road, you know. I got a you know super busy life, and um, it's just good to see that people dig the music when I put it out. You know what I'm saying? Even though they're still in it. I mean, <laughs> How, and speaking of which, what sort of expectations do you put on people for buying music? Because I, I I told someone the other day, I was like, you know, I I, I even though labels send me music. I buy the music of the artists I support just because I feel like it's karma. Like we right. we, we should all want to give to this thing if if this is what we love. Right. Well, but what expectation do you have of of um, listeners these days? Um. I mean, I, I you know come to the realization like the music is basically free, but you know concert tickets and merchandise and everything right. that goes along with it costs. So you know um, those who are gonna get it gonna get it. My my thing is I just want as many ears on it as possible. You know what I'm saying? I want to fill the rooms and. Um, just rock the crowds. I think the last... Sorry, go ahead, Laura. No, because I was going to talk to you about touring, right? Because... Yeah. Uh, and, and and we've had the pleasure of being... Like, I've gone to, like, Japan for Summer Jam Japan, and we've traveled all over the world. Yep. What was the one country that you were rocking the stage? You were like, yo, I can't believe everybody knows my ish till this day. Um, it's got to be, like, um, one of the biggest ones is, like, 100,000-plus people at the Roskilde Festival. I think we opened up for the Rolling Stones. And, you know, it was just, just people as far as you can see, man, and they just knew every single word. It's it's overwhelming. And, and you guys have had such a really interesting career because you've never deviated from who you were. Nope. You were able to be straight B-boys your entire life right. yeah. and still see the money and, and reach that you've seen. Yeah. It's, it's rarefied air. Yeah, man, it's, 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 it's definitely a blessing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there, there's people out there that want something other than what the norm is, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I approach records uh, the same way every time as whatever's going on, I don't want to be a part of that. I want to do my own thing, you know what I mean? It's the whole outcast mentality of just being on the outskirts of what is the, what's happening, you know what I mean? You create, create your own world and you invite people to it. Now, are you guys just going to, is the plan just to continue to sort of take photos and, and hang out and be friendly and just make all of us <laughs> whine and beg and ask you questions. Who was it? Wh what artist do we have in Chris here? Chris Rock. Was it Chris Rock? Yeah. Who said that every time he sees Andre 3000, yes, he's like, Chris what's Rock. up with Outkast? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, we, um, I mean, that's my brother, man. We friends and, and brothers before music, you know what I mean? So, you know, Dre's taking a break right now. You know, I just, you know, wholeheartedly respect it. But um, we're family first, you know what I'm saying? Everything else is second. And, you know, whenever the Lord say do it, it happens. So when you guys last got together a few years ago to do festivals. Yeah. You did. How many How many did you end up doing? Uh, About 40 or 40. Oh, you plus did that many? Years. Yeah. So. I thought it was plus. less than that. I didn't, okay. Because you know, they did the whole world. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So right, here right. it was, you know, here it was, uh, whatchamacallit, Coachella uh -huh. and some of those. But you yeah. could, it, it was all over the world. Yeah, we did like maybe 15 or 20 in Europe as well. And then we did a Fuji Rock in Japan and... Um, splendid in the grass in Australia. So it was a lot of... I'm not going to, even though I desperately want to, I'm not going to get in your pockets about exactly how much you made. <laughs> but 
<laughs> it must be dope, though, to be able to have left such a legacy that when y'all, you know, even though we would all as fans love to get an album again still. Yeah. By the way, I believe we will one day. But mm -hmm. even though we would all want that, how dope is it to be able to be like, yo, let's just get together for a summer and be able to stack up so much money that we don't, we can do whatever we want to continue to do creatively. It is a blessing from the most high, you know? It's incredible. You, can, you can do whatever, man. You go out and... um it's always there, you know what I'm saying? And there are always offers coming in. So, I mean, it's like Frankie Beverly. You know, he ain't put out an album in 30 years, but he come to the city um, three times a year with a linen suit and some sandals on and had a crowd sing for him. You know what I <laughs> mean? Now let's <laughs> so, talk. Let's talk about Boomerverse. Yeah. What was the uh, what, what's the vibe on it? What, what makes this different than the last one? Um, it's just the new. You know what I'm saying? Boomerverse is like um. Uh, we call it the big boom, like the big bang theory, you know what I mean? Just starting off with something fresh, something new, new sounds, new rhyme cadences, musicality, instrumentation, um, um, just to give people something that's refreshing, you know what I mean? Like nowadays, if you, you listen to the radio, you, you can't tell which song is which. Like a lot of the sounds are the same. A lot of the rhyme patterns are definitely the same. And, you know, we just want to do something else to put the feeling back into the music where people can feel it. Music is supposed to evoke emotion. You know what I mean? And and that's what Boomerverse is. We we still on the same path. Now, obviously on Kill Joe, you get Killer Mike and Jeezy. Yeah. But then, of course, you know, because you're you, you have a song with Adam Levine and Sleepy Brown. Yeah. Yeah. So like how do you I, I'm always interested in your features because I know you have very eclectic taste in music. And I know the people yeah. that you put on, there's a reason. Like corrupt is on this album. One of my favorite right. MCs and of I, all time. Because you're an MC and right. you and and a true and corrupt is an MC's MC. Yeah, man. So but then how so in one moment you feel like, you know what would be a good fit? Adam Levine. And then yeah. the next moment you think, so how do, what what's the logic, the process as far as how you go get other people? Um, it's it's like, you know, everything is organically created, never genetically modified. Like the Adam Levine collaboration came, we have the same manager. And, you know, as I'm recording songs, I send it to the, my manager to get him hype about the music. So, you know. When he heard Mike Jack, he was like, uh, it was Sleepy Brown and Scar, and he was like, oh, my God, uh, can I play it for Adam? And I was like, yeah, sure. He was like, I, <laughs> I like the voice in your name. What's your manager's name? Uh, Jordan. Okay. <laughs> he's like, oh, my God. It's, um, he's Jonah Hill's brother, actually. Okay, actor. okay, got So it. then um, uh, L.A. was like, he got wind of He was like, you got to let Adam get on there. Let him get on there. I was like, cool, we'll try it. And now I have, you know, Sleepy, Scar, and Sleepy Brown singing in unison to make one big funk throat. So... It just creates another sound, you know what I'm saying? That's so ill. Uh, yeah, it's incredible. You also uh, have Snoop Dogg. You and Snoop, you you guys and Snoop go back a long time. Yeah, yeah, man. Snoop um, is is the big homie, man, and he actually had a listening party at my studio when I first did the record. Get with it. It sounded like some West Coast uh, action. I was like, man, Snoop would sound good on here. And a week before I was supposed to turn my album in, Snoop had a listening party for his his album Never Never Left and. When I left the studio, the engineer called him and was like, hey, man, Snoop said he want to do a song with you. I was like, man, play him, get with it. He texted me back like, he in there writing. I came back in. I walked in the studio. Snoop looked at me and said, give me 20 minutes. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> 20 minutes later, came back in, and we had to get with it, jam. Uh, did did anything, uh, Andre came to town, uh, I know, after Fife passed away, and I, I, I thought about you guys in that moment. I think a lot of people did. It made sort of everyone think about our favorite groups of all time. Right. And you guys in Tribe are, are linked in a lot of ways because you're yeah. always in everyone's conversation of the best. Right, right, right. Did the did the passing of our friend Fife, um, did it affect you at all in terms of how you guys thought about your legacy or your relationship or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was super sad for one because um, he had just been down in my studio with me, Stankonia, we actually got a couple of records that me and Fife did together. You know what I mean? Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, I'm going to put them out, too. Wow. Um, so we got a couple of jams. And, you know, we were talking about doing the Tribe Called Cast album with Outcast and Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> and, you know. Q Biggest tease in, in the history of the world. It was real. It was, it was real. a real it conversation. Was, it was not conversation. Q-Tip flew to Atlanta. Ali Shaheed Muhammad. We all met at Dre's house. We got to the point of picking out beats for the album. And then some kind of way everybody started doing stuff, and then Fife, you know, so crazy. So uh, it, so it hit on multiple on multiple levels. Yeah, it was happening, bro. Definitely was happening. You know? And how you must have known him for a long time because he's one of the first New York rappers to go to Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. I've been we know him Fife since the Dungeon days. He used to come through the Dungeon when we were working on our first record, and um, he was just always cool, always humbled. And I would see him at Rock the Bells, and 
you know, he was a straight MC B-boy like um, no other, you know what I'm saying? So when he came to the studio and played me some records, we're like, man, we I got the joint for just me and you, you know what I'm saying? That's just a couple of joints. We're going back and forth, line for line. And um, I was like, cool. So I, I got that in the vault. Did you guys, did you and Fife ever feel a kinship as being the members of groups in which y'all are the more, and I say this with the highest reverence to Tip and Andre, but you guys were the more normal, regular, sports-loving dudes in your respective duos, and Dre and Tip are the... Like eclectic. Artsy, eclectic artsy. one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we all got them, them different facets to our personalities, you know what I'm saying? Just some things just come out more than other. Like me, I'm known as the family guy, you know what I'm saying? I'm always with my kids, and, you know, of course I love sports. My boys play ball, so, you know... um, I try to keep, you know, my, my my family life as normal as possible. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm I'm seen a lot because my kids do everything. So people might see me at Top Golf or at the high school football <laughs> games. Like I took. I would off. love to see you at Top Golf. The, oh, I'd be oh, so excited for that. Uh, oh boy, I'm talking about, about threw out my rotator cuff with them kids. Oh, yeah. So you know, um, I took every Friday off last season for my kids' football games for Friday Night Lights. I'm taking every Friday off this season. So wow. I'm, I'm I'm a real deal parent. Wow, that's that's amazing. So so tell us about the kids. How good how good they are. What positions they're playing. Let's get this this ball talk. That's good. Well, my oldest son was playing ball and he didn't want to play no more. So now he's he wants to be an architect, which is great. Um, my young boy is a monster. He's going to his junior year in high school right now. He like got like two or three offers on the table in the tenth grade. Wow, what um, position does he play? Uh, running back. Okay, running back, slot receiver, punt return, and cornerback. Okay. So you know, um, we just visited uh, USC out in um, California, and he's been to Tennessee and UGA, so now me and my wife got to think about buying a house on the West Coast. Okay, well, I mean, don't worry. You can afford, just do a concert. You, you know, <laughs> do one show out there. You do a couple it. shots and you'll be oh, good. Yeah, 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 can, we, can we have some Game of Thrones talk, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, because you know he was, a, didn't you write write a song for like season four? Yeah, yeah. I was um on the Game of Thrones mixtape. On the mixtape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, were you a big fan before the mixtape? Oh, absolutely. Okay, since so you've been in since season, season one. one. Season one. Okay, okay. We just talk about season seven. So yeah, we're, everyone's getting ready for, for season seven. And mm. I think we're, we're getting seven episodes first and then six episodes... A year later, are you ready for? Are you ready for winter? Are you ready to fully get into this? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to see what's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, I think it's gonna be Jon Snow, and and um, Khaleesi. Absolutely. I, you think they combine to eventually win the throne? Be king and queen. Yeah, I think so. I'm with him. I think so too. Yeah, I that's, think that's I, mean, I think that's the way it's supposed. The way it's drawn out. That seems like this destined to happen. <laughs> I'm trying to always think about like what what storyline do you care about the most? What character? You know, they always there are episodes where they get away from certain characters. What? Who are you happiest when they're on the screen? Um, Which story? I like the White Walkers. I like when when they come in because they come in to kill people. You know what I mean? I like the damage they do. I like the, all the big battles. I, I the Giants. The um, Giants are. The giants, I love. I, yo, I pop the for gi the Giants every. They the, look so fucking man, cool. Man, the Giants are good. You know, his buddy passed away. The one, uh, the guy that played the Giant, I think uh, he died. When really? He, yeah, man. Oh wow. So, I'm I'm hoping in this season that there are more Giants. Got to be more of them. You know what I mean? You haven't seen no female ones, so you know I don't know how they. Ooh, that's a that. yo. Yep. Yeah, that's a very good point. You've never seen a female Giant. They gotta. Yeah. There's they, more than one Giant. I mean, there's a few Giants. Gotta be. Gotta be. So I I, I love that. Uh, I, anything that's sci-fi, I like that. I love the dragons because you never know. They love you one day. They could roast you yeah. up the next. You seem. <laughs> You seem you seem like you're always very Khaleesi focused. I, I love Khaleesi. That's she's my favorite. She's Khaleesi's my favorite. Your favorite. Yeah, she's my favorite. I, I go back and forth. Like, I, I love, I really love all of Ned's family. Like I, I like they're not the the ones who are gone. I mean, I miss them. R.I.P. But you know, <laughs> I'm all about like even like Bram was barely on last year, yeah. and I'm very curious to see what he, role he plays moving forward. Right. Because it feels like he has to. Let's not forget Bram falling out, fall, taking that fall at the beginning of season one was almost the set off of like the entire show. Yeah. So Bran has to have a some, significant there's some kind of power that's cool. He might be the one to save everybody. Exactly. It he may be. be the one yeah. to save everybody. And yeah. he they got away from him a little bit. But I also love when Tyrion's on camera too. Like yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. a big oh, like, yeah. oh no, definitely he's he's definitely one of the top two or three actors on the show. Yeah, it's it's true. Yeah. It's so good. And it's so funny because uh do you watch it uh, do you watch it with your wife? Yes. And uh, the whole family. The whole family watches. Yeah, everybody yeah. gets together. Who, who understands it best? Because when I watch, my wife does a lot of explaining to me. I don't get everything. <laughs> I think my wife understands it. Yeah, everything. she gets okay. it. Yeah. 
I my might, ADD, I can't, so I miss certain things. Yeah, because I might be like pre rolling joints and, <laughs> and stuff. And I got to go back and look at it some more, you know what I mean? So, how do you guys, uh, speaking of rolling joints, how do you guys handle uh, weed talk in the family? Is it uh, open? Do you explain? Like, what's your philosophy on parenting and weed? Uh, that's my weed over there. If you touch it, I kid. <laughs> And that's it. Yeah. And it's, you know, my boys, you know, athletes too. So I was like, no right, smoking, right, right. no drinking, no none of that. You know what I mean? So it's locked away in the safe. And 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 if they decide once they're in a time in their life and they're adults and they're past their athletic career, um, they make that decision, you're all right with it? If they got cataracts, yeah. <laughs> but so use only. That's so, it. I got it. So you're a total right, hypocrite, right, right. just like every other parent <laughs> ever, ever in history. <laughs> For sure. Um, all right, Boomerverse, the album is out right now. Yes, sir. Uh, I feel like an ask because I ask this to everyone, but I think it's still important because your guy's name always gets thrown around when I go on my Kendrick talk and talk about how Kendrick might be one of the greatest of all time. Man. And everyone's like, what about Outcast? I'm like, of course, so are they. Um, where do you put that kid in the in the in the big conversation? You think he could be a, an all time great? He's definitely great. You know, he's definitely great. You know what I mean? Um, Who do you love right now of, of, of the young guys? Uh, right now, uh, my favorite got to be Killer Mike. I'm a little biased. Oh, but First Killer of all, I, we were gonna get there. Yeah. I was gonna get to how yeah. proud you must be of Killer Mike and Run the Jewels. Yeah, Killer Mike and Janelle Monae actually. You oh, know Janelle, what I, mean? I mean, let's be honest. Y'all put on some serious business. Yeah, man. So. I mean, as long as the music is thriving, man, and people are pushing the culture forward, um, I'm a fan of lyricism. So anybody that can rhyme, like I'm, I'm listening to you. You know did, what I'm saying? Did you, did you always think that like Mike had more in the tank and was gonna have a bigger run, like he ended up having? Oh, absolutely. From the get go, he was hungry, man. From the first song we did, was snapping the trapping on the um, Equimina album. When I brought him in, my brother introduced me to him, brought him in the studio, and I just threw him in the fire, and he delivered, you know what I mean? And from there, we kept making records, and then we did- Whole a, World. A Grammy, you know what I mean? Um, before we even put out a debut album. And to see him grow from that, from mixtapes, to going with LP and Run The Jewels, and now they're in Europe right now rocking crowds of 80,000 or better headlining festivals. And they keep adding more and more shows. Yeah. They I'm just, keep I'm, adding shows. I'm, I'm like a proud big brother, man. And we actually did a jam for the Baby Driver soundtrack called Chase Me. Uh, it's me and Run the Jewels. The video probably coming out this week. Me and Killer Mike is in the movie with a cameo doing the scene with Kevin Spacey. Wow, wow. okay. Yeah, Frank man. Underwood himself. Come on, man. So we, we <laughs> moved, man. The Dungeon family is thriving, man, for sure. It really, it really is. And then Janelle is, you know, not only is she an amazing I mean, talent, but she's this amazing persona and yeah. and she just she's incredible. Yeah, she she hit me this morning. She's shooting a movie somewhere. I know. And, um, Yo, she's a real actor no, too, no, no, like yes. the real deal. Love during moonlight. She killed it in hidden figures. And then you'll see her at the women's march just yeah. rallying away. Like that woman is incredible. Yeah, she she came from a theater background. You know what I mean? And I, she used to be around the, uh, the studio. She was singing background from this guy named Scar that I signed. Mm -hmm. and is she, is that how you met her? Yeah, and okay. she was... Who's on the album. Yeah, and she was just, you know, kind of always at the studio. I'm like, who is this cute little button look girl right here? <laughs> so it was an open mic night at uh, Puffy's Restaurant, Justin's in Atlanta, and she was singing some Anita Baker, and I got... I went up there and said, hey, come with me. You know what I mean? I'm signing you. And they delivered, and I'm proud of both of them. What about also, you got to be proud of, uh, of the role T.I. has taken. Oh, yeah. I, I love just... I love Tip's voice and, yep. and how passionate... And consistent as like a social leader that Ti has become. For sure, man. Like I mean, it comes a time when everybody you know kind of wakes up and looks at life differently, and you know, um, you 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 have a fire burning inside you that you want to kind of let people know what's going on, and you know to see where he's at now. The substance. I mean, he's always been like a brother to me, and um, we're gonna do some music too. Did you get a chance to listen to? Um, a Chance the Rapper's highly regarded uh, coloring book album. I heard some of it. You haven't gotten to see the whole thing. I heard some of it. I, I hung out with Chance the Rapper at Bonnaroo a couple of years ago. My kids was like diehard Chance the Rapper fans, like going crazy. And I, you know, be uh, me and Dre hooked up with him at the uh, was it uh, in Chicago Lollapalooza at Lala, yeah. Lala, when we did Outcast tour, and he's a real cool guy, man. I think all the success that he's gotten, he definitely deserves it. You know. Did, um, um, I wanted to ask about Donald Glover. Oh, yeah. Did you get a chance to watch Atlanta and, and how'd you feel about it? Yeah, dope. It was dope, man. It was dope. I mean, my kid hit me like, Dad, they're playing your song on the last episode of Atlanta. <laughs> like, I, I remember uh, uh, Gambino was working at my studio, working on mixtapes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just to see where he's gone, 
I mean, Atlanta's thriving. Atlanta, talk, I mean, guys, uh, I'll just I'll say this right now. Atlanta's run as the cultural forefront of hip hop. You know, how you guys may have run it longer than you didn't run it. It's it's it's, it's been hard. a long it's been time. A long time, man. You, you know what it is though? It's the brotherhood in Atlanta. Like, um, everybody is down with everybody. You know what I'm saying? From um, chains and you know the young cats, you know that come through the studio from you know Migos and Twenty One Savage and whoever else. You know what I mean? Like we all, it's a certain respect and admiration that we got for one another. When you see somebody in the strip club, like, hey man, let's do some work. I'm like, all right, cool, come. You know what I'm saying? It really has always felt that way. It yeah. never felt yeah. like there was a. But you know what? I, you know, you know who I give a lot of credit to for that? Outcast. Because, hey. <laughs> I mean, y'all set the bar for Atlanta of you don't have to be one thing. Yeah. You can be anything and you could still be hip-hop. Absolutely, man. Um, to, to have them thinking outside the box and and then, you know, just you got to be all you, you can be. You know what I'm saying? And um, the way we expressed ourselves through music and fashion and when they saw us and, you know, uh, a lot of them when they do interviews, they credit us for inspiration and, and that's dope, man. So... That's why when it comes to the younger artists with me, um, I embrace them, you know what I mean? And my thing is I watch them to see the evolution. I want to see who's going to step the rhymes up, who's going to turn into something else, who's going to evolve, who's taking things serious, you know what I mean? And, you know, in three to five years, you'll find out what's going to be what. We've heard so many rumors of, like, outcasts, of a biopic happening. Do you think that you guys would ever sit down and really, like, go for it and commit to something like that? Yeah, no, we're going to do it. We're yeah. going to do it. We talked about it. We're just trying to see who's going to do it. But we definitely want to be involved, and we don't want nobody telling our story without right. us. You know what I mean? So, um, But there will be an Outcast movie one day. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm hooking up with Dre tonight. We're going to go to dinner. And Dre's here. About. Dre's yeah. around, huh? He's he's between here and, and Atlanta. Yeah, you know but, I mean? It, I mean, these days, more and more often, Everybody you hear Andre pops up here, yeah. Andre yeah. pops up there. At Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah. he's <laughs> very regular yeah. Brooklyn yeah. Andre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, man. Um, uh, big Boy, Boomerverse is out right now. Thank you for making time for us. Know that. Thank Appreciate you. it, man. All right, man. Peace.